Welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for all things, both looking and feeling our best. Now with that comes new information and new information, novelty, you know, this and the other thing happening in the world, it's happening all the time. Now, here's what you need to know. Because Sylvia, God bless Sylvia, she is totally engaged. She sent this information to me. She's in the tutorial. She's attending every lesson. She truly is getting the most out of this experience. Because to get great skin, it requires discipline. And it also requires strategy. And it also requires staying on the straight and narrow to avoid getting distracted by things like the bright, shiny object syndrome or this new trend or this new piece of news. And the new piece of news that came across my desk recently was that the headline, the headline, always take into account of the headline because headlines are designed to get a response from you. And in particular, high adrenaline, high cortisol response because that keeps your attention. But that is a terrible place to reside. You want those hormones operating when you need to maybe run from a tiger (laughs) or something's happening and you need to be in that state. But if you are in that state, you go by the headlines and like, oh my gosh, this is happening without fact checking and fully investigating. You're going to age faster. Your skin's going to freak out and your life's probably going to be a mess. The whole thing here about the school of radiance is how you can have more grounded, peaceful, mature and evolved way of living. It isn't just about your skincare products. It's how you put all the pieces together. Yes, with your skincare routine, keeping it simple. And I'm going to get into some things that I haven't recommended in the past. It's actually in alignment with the new EU regulations. Retinol is not banned in the EU. I just want to clear that up. Those headlines are totally false and they just grab your attention. And honestly, if you were to look at that article talking about that, if you're to scroll down, there's probably a link to another product. You're going to be seeing a lot of companies sort of like jumping on this new news bandwagon of retinol being banned, and they're going to do it as a blog post. And then it's going to be like, hey, use this alternative form of retinol, which really hasn't been on the market very long and is really expensive. And we really don't know the long-term outcomes of it. I wanted to preface this because last night while I was sort of doing my evening routine, I did my sauna, I took my bath, I did my skincare and it was, you know, in my room putting some clothes away and just kind of considering the topic that I was going to be recording today. And also after this in the membership on hormones and living, because I've come across again, some more really incredible information, but the way I deliver this stuff to you isn't in a way that's going to jar your system. I'm delivering it in a way very, oh, there's a lot of intention behind this. And Meredith, thanks so much for reaching out recently, letting me know that you listen to this while you sleep. I deliver this podcast in a way that's very different from other shows, which is more that high adrenaline, high cortisol state. And you're going to hear this in speakers' voices. They're really intense. It's like, if you don't do this, you're going to die. And that kind of sentiment and mentality, you know, we don't want that. That isn't conducive to a healthy nervous system and regulated hormones that are operating in a way that are going to be balanced because if your hormones are off, you're going to be off. Hormones are legitimately responsible for our behaviors and also others' behaviors. So the more you understand these concepts of your foundations of reducing oxidative stress, which I am just such a fan of for longevity and healthy skin and getting the most out of our rejuvenation. And then it's like the more you know, the more there is to learn. And then adding uh, this additional layer of hormones in the way I'm going to be kind of dripping this stuff into your awareness, because if it's too much all at once, you're going to, you know, become paralyzed. And it isn't about inaction. It's actually about taking imperfect action because not taking action can actually end up being more costly. People who are really successful, they fail a lot, but they're persistent and they're resilient. So resilience is really important in life too. I really wanted to share this sentiment because when I was in my bedroom, winding down, 
writing a fantastic book that I'm going to be doing the Audible for called Shabazz Rising. It's actually an espionage novel written by my uncle. Very exciting. I am just hanging on every word. I was considering to myself what I wanted to talk about, but also my prediction. My prediction around the headline of EU's banning retinol. I thought to myself, okay, when have we seen this before? You always want to think historically when we've seen these types of headlines before. And it actually happened not too long ago with an active ingredient called hydroquinone. There are some nuances between EU, Canada, and the USA regulation in regards to the number of products that are banned with EU having the highest number of products banned. And I do work with an EU-based brand called Illumier. And yes, they do make retinols, but they also make some of them at a lower concentration. And I'm curious about their PR strategy to relay to practitioners that this shift has changed because it's an EU-based brand. And so that's why I do my best to actually source a lot of products from Europe and from Canada. And yes, sometimes in the States too, but there's just more to be aware of that different countries have different regulations. Historically, we saw the same type of phenomena, these headlines grabbing everybody's attention. People assume, oh, the EU is banning hydroquinone. No, they're not. What they're doing is they're restricting the concentration. So when I was considering this topic before diving into the research, which I did, not the research, but basically the statements was historically, we've seen this before. We saw it with hydroquinone. It used to be available at 8% and then it was 4% and then it was 2%. So I had a feeling it wasn't going to be this potent antioxidant itself. Retinol has been on the market since I think the 80s now. And it's basically a cornerstone active ingredient in pretty well most skincare lines. My position on retinol has always been nothing is great for everybody, okay? And for myself personally, I actually don't use a ton of retinol. However, it is helpful for say pore size refinement, acne, fine lines, wrinkles, pigmentation, things like that. But I've actually always been a fan of using lower concentrations, not really intense concentrations. There is a product with a higher concentration, but if you read the fine print, I actually only um, have historically suggested use of that product for a max of one day at a time a month two days at a time a month, three days at a time a month. It was actually a, a basically utilized alongside kind of like a monthly overnight type of peel. And that was really interesting, especially during the pandemic, because people couldn't go in to the rejuvenation clinics to do their peels. And then these companies are kind of figuring different things out and making more at home peel options available to suit the demand, to meet the demand. It's always kind of the supply and demand thing. And it's always kind of this, how can we keep your attention? I'm happy to say that my prediction was correct, that it wasn't going to be a banning of retinol. It was going to be a concentration shift. Too much of anything is a good thing. And in high concentrations of retinol, you're going to get that retinoid reaction phase, redness, dry skin, flaking, irritation. If you use as a retinol that isn't designed for the eyes, you're going to get eye irritation, stinging, redness, and you have to use these actives responsibly, responsibly, and with strategy. People often think, oh, there's this new superhero ingredient or cream. I'm going to buy it without doing my foundations, and I'm going to magically have the skin that they show in their before and after photos, or I'm going to achieve all the claims that they say in their media and marketing package. No, retinol is never going to be a standalone product. It's going to be woven in only after you've done your foundations with cleansing, moisturizing, sun protection, and exfoliation. Because if you put a retinol into the mix without having those foundations of your skin's needs in check, you are going to get irritation and that product is going to end up in the drawer where products go to die because you're going to be scared to use it. So you have to use actives like retinols and peels and serums even. Some people can even be a little bit reactive to vitamin C. I've seen that historically. So guess what? We're probably going to see a vitamin C concentration thing happen in the next couple of years. The hydroquinone thing happened a few years ago. So I was like, okay, historically, what have we seen? It's not a banning of the ingredient, but it's a percentage regulation. 
And I actually agree with this. I agree with the concentration that's allowed to be lowered. And it's, again, when you start with retinol, you, you do want to be starting with the more mild concentration. So the, the retinols that I have on my skin shop, some are from the EU, some are from Canada, and they're at different concentrations. So we're going to see companies making this shift also with their media and marketing with percentages, but retinol is not going anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, it is one of the key cornerstones and key antioxidants in the skincare world for anti-aging skin needs. It's not going anywhere. It's just the percentage is going to be shifting. When I then the next day, so last night made the prediction today, read more in detail on the regulation shift that's happening that's over concentration i was pleasantly surprised because that was my prediction because historically i've seen it before so kudos to sylvia for being the first person to bring this to my awareness however i really encourage you to not pay attention to headlines you always have to do your due diligence i mean have you not learned your lesson over the last couple of years when the whole world shut down and all this stuff was happening and articles were coming out left right and center on things and they're all headlines to grab your attention because attention is currency and the more you know that and the less of a consumer you become you know, I think the better able you're going to be at discerning different people, places, and situations, because these all really impact your radiance and the amount of peace that you feel. So if you are scrolling and you're seeing headlines and you kind of focus on that and you're spending way too much time in the day keeping up with current events, then it's going to impact you. It's going to impact your hormones. It's going to impact your stress levels. So when you see a headline, take a beat. And don't get lost in the rabbit hole. So myself as a researcher, what I do is I find a signal or I find information and then I dip in and then I dip out. Some people really get lost in that rabbit hole. Alice in Wonderland, she fell down the hole and oh my gosh, it was like that whole movie is like a psychedelic trip, if you will. So I don't want you to be tripping. I want you to be, again, staying on the straight and narrow. So that's really what I wanted to say in regards to the headline of, is EU banning retinol? No, it's simply a concentration regulation shift, which I'm not surprised by. And I do actually agree with, and historically we've seen the same thing with hydroquinone. My prediction is probably going to be something like vitamin C next. So stay tuned for that one. I'm going to open it up for some questions. If there are any questions here on retinol, and I'd also love your feedback. I've been doing these shows here now live for, for a while, I, I think almost close to a year. And I just want to make sure that when you're tuning in, you're really tuning in for what you want and you're getting a lot of value. So oftentimes when I do these live recordings, I very much start out with the framework and then see the questions that come in and then it can go really anywhere. And I'm really curious if you would like me to continue to do that approach or if you would like me to go back to doing some more solo stuff. I think it is great to be able to answer questions like with something that's really popular in the headlines with retinol. But I also want to take into consideration that your time is valuable and the time that you're spending learning with me and receiving these updates are done in an efficient way. I value efficiency. I don't value getting consumed by headlines and going down rabbit holes that aren't really that effective. So that's why you're here is to get this updated information in a way that's very current and also in a way that's going to allow you to become a more conscious consumer. And for those of you who've had your one-on-ones with me, who've had tutorials, in the one-on-one, -on -one, I always like to recommend starting with your basic routine to sort of whisper and stabilize your skin, then start to add in sort of the talking to the skin with antioxidants, serums, peels, then have the conversation with the skin with dermal rolling, and then maybe after that, doing some rejuvenation. And in the tutorials that I host every season, they're always live, they're fun, they're interactive. I literally have a whole lesson on this topic of skin cycling, which retinol is included in as well as peels and serums and basically a whole hour explaining 
what I think you need to know, what I do, what I see work, what I see not work, so that you're really maximizing what you're doing. And then, of course, the membership is really where I go into more of the personal development side of things, a lot of the psychology things, and ways for you to build your countenance, your confidence, and your community. It's a lot of the deeper things that I do behind the scenes that really have just, like, I've loved learning about these things because they've made my life better. They've made my life easier. And so if I like learning about them, I know that you will as well. And you can find all this information over at theschoolofradiance.com. That's a wrap on today's show all on, is EU really banning retinol? No, it's not. It's simply a concentration shift. Don't get your panties in a bunch, everybody. But allow this to be a lesson learned with headlines and to really have trusted sources that you can get a little bit more information on so you don't have to. I love making your life easier and relaying this information to help you both look and feel your best. And of course, this isn't medical information This is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day. And again, I'm just thrilled that you're here because there really is no one else in the skin and rejuvenation space that's really blending how we can both look and feel our best in the way that I'm doing it, which, you know, it's, it's gentle process, your journey of moving into the individual that you know you can be, but it comes down to, you know, what's the right step to take? What's the process? How do you not overwhelm your system? And how do you truly become that beautiful human that's going to make an impact in your personal life, your professional life, with your family, because you're not going to be beautiful. You're not going to be radiant. If you don't have these other really deeper layers of yourself, you've heard the term beauty is an inside job. And I'm here to tell you that that sentiment is 100% accurate. You can have all the money in the world and spend it on rejuvenation. But if you're not doing the really important body, mind, spirit, energy stuff, I mean, You could have work done and have all the signs of aging eradicated, but it's the eyes, it's the expression, it's the countenance, it's the way that you carry yourself. And if you don't have money for rejuvenation, there's so much that you can do just in the way that you hold and carry yourself and walk through life that will actually allow you to be perceived as more beautiful and radiant and a pleasure to be around, which is actually just going to make your life easier. Andrea says, thanks for all the info you are sharing, as well as your choice of content you share. My pleasure. If you have any podcast topic requests like this one, I warmly invite you to send me an email over at info at the school of radiance.com. I'm showing up here for you to support you and provide value in your life so that you don't make the same mistakes I've made or, you know, other people are making all the time and to really just honestly help your life be better and brighter. (laughs) All right. Love you all so much. I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.